You will never trust a bear to help you climb down, sir. That was not what was happening. <laughs> He's trusting that bear to help him down the ladder? I'd never do that. Bro, you did not you did not understand what was happening in the video. No, I know you're joking. He's a Trump supporter. The the only thing, bro, Lil Pump was trying to make that 2021 thing a catchphrase so bad, bro. He was trying to make that shit a catchphrase so fucking bad, bro. Holy shit. The very last song on J. Cole. The very last song on J. Cole's 2018 album K.O.D. is called 1985. This song acts as a warning to all up-and-coming rappers you about their- this TikTok trend on YouTube of people telling their family members fake celebrity deaths? Yes, I think it's brain dead and I think it's the stupidest shit I've ever seen in my life. It is so weird to go up to your parents or anybody in general and pretend like somebody died, bro. That shit is the weirdest thing ever, bro. Like- and the fact that some of them go into detail too, like this person dead, 75, car crash. How the fuck is that funny? Where are we at today in, in society where like, like teenagers think that shit's funny enough to post it online. And then the comment section is like, I'm weak. Did you see her reaction? Not her crying. <laughs> what? It is the weirdest thing. If that makes me, like, if that makes me, like, the res for me saying that and the response is you need to lighten up, that, I, I, then I don't get it. I don't know. Comedy is different then. <laughs> Comedy is, is different then. It was kind of funny, not gonna lie. I bet it, I bet it was, bro. I, I bet it was to you. Cause you're, you're, you're literally someone in my chat and you're probably somebody who says some crazy shit, bro. I, 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 I don't be, I don't be surprised. Niggas think white kids saying the hard arts to somebody is, is funny. So it's like. Yeah, comedy is subjective, but I just I just don't get that one, bro. I don't get that, and uh, I think it's I think it's pretty stupid, bro. Inevitable demise with lyrics telling them how it's like somebody recording your reaction, telling you that your mom died or that your favorite cousin died. Yeah, they died. Gunshot to the head. Oh, oh my god! And then they get your reaction like, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you guys follow me on my TikTok. It's like, uh, uh, what? Where was the Where was the joke? Not only that, you're kind of putting that energy out into the atmosphere. Like you're you, you're kind of putting that energy out in the world, bro. Yikes. My question was where the where the line is. That's that's what I'm saying. There is no line anymore. I I already knew there was no line and I was not surprised by the trend happening just by how people be in like streamers chats or in just uh comment sections on Instagram. I knew there was just no boundaries to be had, bro. Like people think anything is funny. They think anything is funny. Anything I don't know. Anything is funny. How they should manage their money. I don't criticizing know. Criticizing their looks and telling them. And if you if you don't think it's funny, is it's it's always an excuse. It's always a reason why you don't get the joke. How their music won't last more than a couple years. When the song dropped, the consensus was that J Cole sounded like a grumpy old head complaining about the next generation. Now it's four and a half years later, and looking back, J Cole predicted the future with incredible accuracy. It's important to note that the 1980. I mean, okay, you're giving J. Cole. Okay, shout out to J. Cole. I like J. Cole just as much as the next person. But I think anybody should know and, and does know that, like, things like that, like these rappers and stuff like that, are, are like, they're trends. If you're not saying anything of substance, like, people are going to be on it for the moment it's out, but then after that, it's going to dissipate. It happens. It's the same thing with dances, bro. Dances will be trending, and then, like, people are like, yo, you should. Are you still doing that? Like, mm. five record probably would mm. never have been made if Lil Pump didn't attack J. Cole first. In early 2017, while Pump True. was buzzing in the SoundCloud world, he noticed his comment section on social media was flooded with people typing, fuck J. Cole. Why? No reason. So Pump ran. Because it's funny. They think it's funny. They think it's funny. It's like the stupidest things. People just, if one person says it and a lot of people start saying it, it's just automatically funny to people nowadays ran with it and started trolling j cole because it made his fans mad and got his engagement up the 17 year old rapper posted a video of him in the studio working on what seemed to be a diss track lil pump is a twitch chatter lil pump is literally a twitch chatter troll who got famous he was a twitch chatter tw troll who happened to get famous and what happened to this twitch chatter troll he got his attention for a bit and he had the people follow him for a bit. But now guess what? The person who was talking about his ass 
and telling him how goofy he is and how like that shit not gonna last is doing more shit and is more relevant and this guy this troll is nowhere to be found the only time he's ever found is when it's talking about how these niggas demise had happened <laughs> It, the only time I the, the only time I've recently been seeing Lil Pump is when they've been talking about how Lil Pump is irrelevant. It's crazy to me, bro. Now I, bro, chat y'all are weird. I'm not talking about nobody specific. Why the fuck are y'all talking about Cam? <laughs> Why are y'all talking about Cam? This is the thing. This is the thing. I like Cam. I think Cam is. I, to be fair, I think Cam is funny, bro. I completely and wholeheartedly understand why people don't fucking like him my wife can't stand him <laughs> my wife can't fucking stand him me personally <laughs> i think he's funny because I, I i i get it bro i think he's funny because i i get it he's selling out shows overseas who Lil pump i don't bro good for him like he want a cookie bro i don't listen to him i don't care i don't have no, like bro he's still Nobody talks about him though, and when they do talk about him, it's in a negative light. But me personally, I don't have I don't have nothing against him. But it's still the the fact remains the same. He obviously there's some truth to what J Cole said because in his interviews he seems so like hurt. He seems so hurt by the shit. He won't answer the questions when they're asked. He's like, I don't know what you're talking about. It's like, bro, come on now, come on now. And I ain't gonna lie, selling out shows, like, outside of the U.S., I mean, I, like, yeah, but it's like, I don't know, bro. I don't know. Respect to them, because I ain't gonna knock nobody that's still in a bag, you know, uh, and got a fan base somewhere. But I'm just like, damn, who who is going to these shows? And what, is he still performing the old, the same old songs? But I guess that's what rock bands be doing, too. There be, like, rock bands who haven't put out music in, like, years, or and even the songs that they do put out recently, like, nobody listens to. But they can still like perform all over the place just off of their old shit. But mm, I don't know, man. However, this song was never released and was probably just another social media stunt to add to his long history of social media clout chasing. Cole never addressed the low pump drama until one full year later when he dropped his album KOD. The last track, 1985, was where he tried to address Pump and all the new generation rappers. All these dudes popping now is young. Everybody. He got Spanish songs. See, that's probably what it is. And that's that's smart. He's tapping into like the Spanish shit and that shit. Oh, my gosh, bro. Like just the fact that he could tap into that and get on that. That's probably like the smartest decision he can make. But he say the music along with like investing and all that shit think that they make is dumb. Lil Pump, Smoke Perp and 6ix9ine were assumed to be the artist. Oh, my gosh. What, what about Smoke Perp? Is he is he was he doing? 6ix9ine, I'm not gonna lie. So it's not one of them people who like everybody hated and said was gonna be dead every year after another, and he was he's still been doing he's he's still been doing his thing like he's literally been chilling. So many people were in his comment section saying, he, "I don't get I'm I'm gonna give him a month next month. He's not gonna make it till next year. Next year he's gonna be dead. He's gonna be like he's still doing what he wants to do. That's where I, it's kind of like that's where I kind of gotta respect it. I ain't gonna lie." I ain't gonna lie, bro. Cole was addressing in the record, but really it was just a general message to all rappers. In 2016 and 2017, there was a cultural divide between young rappers, their fans, and old rappers and their fans. Yep. It's commonly referred to as the clout rap era. And it's like, why could, I remember back when, I, I remember back when I was like really tapped in on that shit, I was still thinking to myself like, why don't people just like both, bro? Cause I was reacting to all this shit. I was, I was reacting to when Eminem would drop something, it, uh, if Lil Pump would drop something, I was, like, I was like reacting to whatever, bro. It's like, why did it have to be this or that? That's why I hate comparisons. There are good things for different things. Like this clout rap shit was good for what the energy that it bought. But if I wanted substance, I would listen, you know, to this artist here. So I never got why people like really try to hate on one thing or the other. That, essentially, you need like all of it. The young rappers didn't feel like they owed respect for the lyrical rappers or classic hip hop enthusiasts. And the old heads didn't really deserve it because they were quick to make fun of the young rappers for their image, lack of- Oh my God, I remember this. I fucking remember this shit. Lyrics and attitude. J. Cole has kept the spirit of traditional 90s hip hop even through the 2010s and 2020s. Some of his fans look at him as like the 
only hope for hip hop, which makes him a very easy target since his fans are so passionate about his music. Money, pussy, parties, I was on the same thing. You gotta give a boy a chance to grow some. Everybody talking like they know something these days. Man, they barely old enough to drive. To tell them what they should do, who the fuck am I? Cole and what did they do? They spam, they, yo, they spammed J. Cole with old head, bro. <laughs> they spammed him with old head, bro. Yo, if 30 was out then, if like that 30 shit was out then, he would be getting spammed with 30, bro. Yo, you're 30, start a family. <laughs> yo, yo, I know you're not 30 and still rapping. Hold on, hold on, start a family, bro. Yo, how old is academics, bro? Niggas being academics comments. <laughs> Niggas being academics comments, like, like just out of no like, I hate his comment. Like, I can't stand his comments, bro. I hate his comment section, bro. Like, I don't know how he do that shit every day, bro. And posts posts multiple shit a day. It's his fucking job, but it's just nothing but fat jokes. And the fat jokes are a play on the fu whatever the caption is. Jake, uh, uh. YB just dropped a new message, uh, a new message for the youth. Act just dropped his new diet for his fat. Like, like it's like crazy shit. <laughs> I'm like, bro, are we 31? Why? Okay, so I thought he was like younger. I, I don't know why I thought he was younger, but niggas be like, yo, act, you're 30, start a family. I'm like, what the fuck is this? Like, what is that? Empathizes with the young dudes. The clout era rappers that? he was referring to focused a little bit more on the image and the lifestyle than the music. Once you turn 30, yes, I'm pausing a lot because I have a lot to say, okay? Relax, okay? But it's like, once you turn 30, you're not allowed to be doing nothing. Like, you should not be having fun anymore. You need to, hit, yo, 30 and streaming? Get a job. It's like, you're not allowed to do nothing, bro. They typically had more likes on Instagram than people listening to their songs. Mm. Cole admits that he was also attracted to the lifestyle. Followers don't mean nothing, by the way. That like that's just crazy. It's about core support because anybody could follow you. Following, but th and this is the thing: people should not expect their amount of followers to equal sales. Like, following is free. You don't have to pay nobody to follow. That's why it's like it hits entirely different when people are like subscribing to something. Like gamer, uh. 8687 that is real like that's something you don't have to do and for someone to come out their pockets that shows that they they really fuck with you and they're gonna be down for you okay just because you have a million followers and all this shit does not mean nothing because a follow is free and it almost seems hypocritical for him to be giving them advice i heard one of them diss me i'm surprised this is obviously where he's talking about little pump i ain't tripping listen good to my oh what's up sorry chat i just wanted a hug oh that shit no, nah, she just wants a hug. Hold on, chat. Sorry, chat. I'm pregnant and emotional. <laughs> I love you. I love you too. You okay? Don't my nigga, I don't take I just wanted to hug you. Okay. Got food coming. I bet. <laughs> my reply. Come here, little man, let me talk with you. See if I can paint you the large picture. Congrats, you made it out your mama house. I hope you make enough to buy your mama house. Mm. Lil Pump, four years later, did in fact buy his mama house. I did everything I wanted to do. I moved my mom out of the hood. Yep. Moved my whole family out of the hood. Yep. My family straight. I see your watch icy and your whip foreign. I got some good advice. Never quit touring. What did homie just say? What did homie just say in the, co in, in the chat? I ain't gonna lie, he's still, he's still doing shows. <laughs> he still got showed out shows in the other uh, thing. That's good though, that's good. I'm glad he found like a different different lane to be in. Cause I don't know if he's still, I mean, he probably could have still been touring. If you have anything to your name, like if you made anything of your name, there's always gonna be a way for you to get money. Cause people are always gonna look at you as like that celebrity. So it's like, that's why Cameo is such a big thing. Cause it don't matter who you are on Cameo. If you had some type of like legacy, People are going to pay for you to say something because of what you have done. So, you know, I, I guess it's a, I guess it's still a win. Like, that's why I would never like knock anybody doing any type of hustle, except if they were coming at me for some reason. Then I'm gonna knock the fuck out of your hustle. Like, fuck you. Cause that's the way we. Eat. Random don't know about you. Everything back to when everybody hates Chris and think about how racist and out of pocket the teacher was. <laughs> That is that I'm not gonna lie. That is so random. But I I will see clips and memes of it on like uh on instagram be like god damn bro like what the fuck was wrong with her bro <laughs> what the fuck was wrong with her does that mean he's doing better than the bay right now um i'm not gonna lie if it's true that he's really selling out shows 
and it like it, and it's the to the Spanish community. He's doing extremely better than the, is that would he be doing extremely better than the baby right now? Cause the baby like he's really only tapped in on like hood nigga hood nigga shit and and people who are like from the streets of America. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not a pocket watcher, so I wouldn't know. I like I haven't even I literally haven't even seen Lil Pump do anything. But I've heard more of what the baby has been on. So I, I, I couldn't tell you. If we if it was terms of like relevancy, probably the baby. If it was terms on like wealth, I I I couldn't I couldn't tell you. Eat here in this rap game. Rappers are commonly trapped in really bad contracts where they only receive about 10 to 20 percent of the revenue earned from album sales and streams. Whereas their tours and live performances, they keep everything. So a rapper might sell five. Well, he's definitely doing better than Tory. I ain't gonna lie. Everybody right now, every man is doing better than Tory right now, bro. <laughs> like every man and woman is doing better than Tory right now. He really fucked up his life over an argument, bro. Like 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 why? Why? Why, bro? And you sh It wasn't even like it it wasn't even apparent like a shot to the foot. It was a ricochet. Why are you just shooting gun? Like why are you just shooting the gun? Oh god. I still can't believe that. I I really can't believe that. I really thought I was gonna come out that that uh Meg was like lying. I really thought that's what it was gonna be. Just cause how the story kept forming and morphing, bro. And now he's done. Did any and I got a question, okay? Like, I hope the best, you know, I hope the best for, for both parties, but uh I don't want anybody getting mad at this because I it was just an observation, okay? But I seen a video of his dad, I think, and his little sister or something walking out of the courthouse. And the little girl must have thought this was like a Medea movie or something. And was like, they need to free my brother. They are lying to this man in the jurisdiction. I'm like, like, like I had to scroll off the video. I I, I literally had to scroll off the video. It was, it, it, I like, I, cr I like, I cringe. And I, and I don't want to like make fun of anything, but it was just like, like, was she fed those lines and told to say that? Because the way she was talking seems so scripted. And it doesn't seem like something. <laughs> it just doesn't seem like... It was just weird. It was just weird. But, like, I hope the best for everybody, man. It's just a fucked up situation all around. And, uh... Damn, 22... 23 years, I think he's facing. And deport deportation. 500,000 records and make $100,000. Or do four shows in one weekend and make the same amount. But when you factor in how much time... Hold on, chat. I, I gotta show y'all, cause y'all y'all think I'm like I don't want y'all to think I'm like joking, some little girl. I just want y'all to see, like what I saw. Uh, I just want to show y'all like like what I seen. Open up. Open up. Open up. With my brother's reputation. Um, who pushes you the most? I just stood here in this Los Angeles County and witnessed the worst miscarriage of justice yes. that this world has yes. ever seen. Yes. You want to know how I feel? I'll tell you exactly how I feel. I got some names that I want to call. Alex Spiro, Desiree Perez, and the whole Rock wicked Nation. system of Rock Nation, yep. including you, Jay-Z. Yes, yes. You who yes. say you yes. rose from the gutter, but you have traded and bartered the souls of young men. Yep. Wait, what? What did Jay-Z do? That's a genuine question. And you're still doing it. Yeah, I saw that he got mad at Jay Z and Beyonce. Like, what they got to do with you shooting Megan in the foot? Yeah, that's like that. That he owns Rock Nation. Yeah, but even if Jay Z owned Rock Nation, Jay Z ain't make Tory shoot Megan in the foot. Rock Nation ain't make Tory shoot Megan in the foot. Tory shot Megan in the foot. Why are we blaming Jay Z and Rock Nation? 
The only independent witness in this courtroom is a man whose name is Sean Kelly. He came to court Allegedly. and our attorney. You said what? Allegedly. Bro, Daniel sent me a meme. What was it? <laughs> she just, yo. She sent me that, hold on. Hold on, let me wait for it to focus. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me wait for it to focus. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Focus, come on now. Focus up, come on. It's there. It's, it's. Uh, bro, it's not working, man. Focus, motherfucker. I ain't gonna lie. Did y'all see it? Turn the brightness down? I ain't gonna lie. That's crazy. That's crazy. Because it's like, even me, even me, I was thinking that, damn, Tori might, Tori might have actually not done it. But then when, I mean, once you found guilty, you gotta, you gotta own up, you, you know, you, you're, you're guilty, bro. It's, it's like nothing, nothing to really, really say about it, bro. Uh, hold on, let's see if it still works. I'll turn the brightness down. Yeah, it's kind of OD. But it's like, <clears throat> even if people still don't believe her, you don't be sure. it's, no, like, like, it's, like, what, it's like, what can you do? He's been found guilty. In the court of law. You know? That doesn't mean that he's guilty, because, like, you know, they do be making mistakes. There be people who be charged with murder, comes out years later, they didn't kill nobody. But mm. I'm an effort. Yeah, he can he can appeal. He can appeal. He can appeal. Into finalizing and releasing an album versus a 30 to 60. But I think some people just really genuinely don't like Meg the Stallion and don't want her to be right. I think a lot of that's what it is, bro. I'm not saying there's no like sexist stuff or some shit like that, but some people just genuinely don't like Meg the Stallion and want her to lose minute performance, you realize how much faster and easier that show money is. Lil Pump and 6 9 have resorted to doing tours overseas. They still have large fan bases outside of the USA, and they could still make a huge paycheck. But neither of them really ever do shows in the US, probably because the crowds would be much smaller, which would mean less money, and most likely people making fun of them on social media. That's crazy, I bro. I wonder what it is. I wonder what the perception is. Is it because, like, Lil Pump comes off as like much more famous in other places than he does here because we just know what's really going on. Is that what it is? <clears throat> yes. We outcast them. Yeah, probably that too. Hear your music and I know that. Yo, chat, does every, does social media like, this is going to sound, okay, this might kind of sound like a little crazy, a little slow. But I'm still gonna ask it because I need to fuck. I, I'm trying to fucking understand. With social media, is there different like Instagrams in different places, or is it just like the same social media but there's just different sections for different countries? Because it's like everybody knows about the shade room. But it's like, does everybody know about the shade room? Like, is there a shade room for each country? Like, is there a different shade room for each country? Or is it the same shade room, but theirs is just in a different language? Like, it's just in a different language. I'm just, you know, I just don't understand. No, it's the same. What the fuck? That's, okay. It's just confusing. Okay. It's just confusing. Twitter's for every country. Cause I, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to get it. Okay, I'm just trying to get it. I'm so like, it's so confusing. I just use Shade Room cause that's like the biggest thing I could think of. Like World Star, okay, World Star Hip Hop. Like if something happens in the UK or um Africa, do they say World Star? Like, would they say world star in their language? Hmm. 
<laughs> let him cook. No, because like chat, I'm really trying to like understand it because we see the news how we see it from our social media. And we see that this nigga Lil Pump has fell off. So it's like, do they see it and not like how could they see what we see and still buy tickets to a Lil Pump show? That's what I'm trying to understand. That's essentially what I'm trying to understand, bro. It's different for different countries. Mm. Twitter sucks ass. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't be on Twitter, so maybe it's, maybe it's just like Twitter shit. I don't know. Raps changed. A bunch of folks would say that's a bad thing because everything's commercial and it's pop now. Trap drums is the shit that's hot now. See, I've been. On <laughs> he said you lost me. That's why I'm just trying to. That's why I'm trying to like comprehend, bro. Some people wouldn't see it, see it, and still think Lil Pump is him. Yeah, true. On a quest for the next wave, but never mind. That was just a segue. He also hints that these artists shouldn't be trend hopping and making music to satisfy the current sound. After Gucci Gang in 2017, Pump struggled to make noise with another record. Esket it, drug addicts, be like me, butterfly doors. Surprisingly, all these songs did hit the Billboard Hot 100, but faded away faster than ever. You can get instant clout for being American. Now, I actually seen like I think it's in Dubai. Like, if you're American and you go there, you're treated like royalty. Like. The, the, the way they treat Floyd, like, it's, it's, it's just fucking ridiculous. And I thought it was just Floyd because it's like, it's Floyd Mayweather. But no, bro, fucking speed goes over there, bro. Like, like, it's like, bro, any, like, if you got any type of notor notoriety here, you're like, it's like times 10 over there. Pump undoubtedly had a huge fan base that were eager for him to come up with something fresh. So they would tune into the next song only to realize it sounded exactly like the last one. Yeah. Plus, people that hated him wanted to see what he was going to do next as well. The same thing could be said for 6 9 Also, it was most likely his legal issues and gang affiliations that ruined his career. His music didn't evolve much, neither did the names of his songs. To be fair though, there is a fine line of sticking with a sound and just making the same song over and over. Oh my god, I wonder what all these girls are doing nowadays in the background. They swore they was like locked in forever. Let's say in Africa, in African countries, I believe a lot of them would buy tickets to Lil Pump in Morocco too. Although we kind of know he fell off in the U.S. Hmm. Over again. As much as people hate on DaBaby, musically he achieved a lot of success by making very similar sounding music for three years straight. But yeah. who am I kidding? Today it's not looking so good for him either. I know you think this type of revenue is never ending, but I want to take a minute just to tell you that ain't true. One day them kids listening gonna grow up and get too old for that shit that made you blow up. Now your show's looking light cause they don't show up, which unfortunately means the money slow up. That's, yo, that is why like, I have kind of been like more of myself as I was like, as the years I started putting in like doing content and like streaming, cause at first, I tried to be like, um, I tried to like not be as crazy because I knew there was like people watching me and like they were younger, but then I got older and I was like, I kind of don't care if they're younger and they're watching me. I kind of still want to say what I got to say, especially when we talk about like more serious topics. I don't want to sugarcoat things. I'm not trying to be like, you know, Nick A30. I'm not trying to throw shots at the brother. I get it. A bag is a bag. I mean, if you play in Fortnite, you kind of got to, if you play in Fortnite, kind of being PG comes hand in hand. I get it. Same with uh like Ninja, he wanted like he wanted to stop cursing and things like that. That shit makes sense, but I don't know. I don't want to be locked into that box where then it's like I'm too kitty. But it's also like I, I'm not trying to be like crazy, like crazy vulgar to where it's like it's just entirely too much. Even though I still think it's probably still too much. These could be the lines that cut the deepest, mostly for Smoke Perp. You see, after 1985 dropped, a clip went viral of fans at a Smoke Perp show chanting. <laughs> Oh, I remember this. And Perp continued the energy of hating on Cole. Before the show, they were chanting J. Cole because we are kids on drugs, bitch. You know what's going on. Two years later, his album Florida Jit. Yeah, but that's not good, though. Sold 5K in the first week. Then in 2022, Perp's 16 year old rebel fan base was now 21. They grew mm. up and they didn't show up to his tour. Mm. His crowds were looking scarce. Perp started going viral for nobody showing up to his shows. Instead of putting on a performance and rocking out to the small crowds, Perp would just leave early or can't. See, now that's where it's fucked up. More people, I think that's why people really stopped like kind of fucking with him. It's the fact that he's just walked out. I feel like if you draw a small crowd, smaller than what you're even used to, 
and he still performed and like put on a show and had a good time, took pictures with everybody, people will respect him more. He might actually gain new fans. He might have actually gained new fans. Cancel his own shows. Then the money slows up, and oh boy, was this evident. All of the clout era rappers have resorted to some cheap ins. Oh my gosh. Well, no, he got he kind of got fucked over. Um, because it came out like it came out not true, right? It was an allegation against him, like an R word allegation against him, right? And then it ended up coming out like that it was like a false allegation, right? Correct? I can't remember if he was actually found guilty or not. I don't think he was found guilty because I don't think he'd be fucking out of here, oh, like fucking out here doing this shit. I think he'd be locked the fuck up. But it came out and he, 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 uh, th then he was, he was like innocent or whatever. But it was like already too late because once you got them allegations, like, bro, it seems like allegations are like, you did that type of shit nowadays. Instagram promotions. Partnered up with High Key Cloud. And so look, we're no. giving away $10,000. Yo, this is Smoke Perp. No. And I'm teaming up with High Key Cloud to give oh, away free no. $10,000. What's up, guys? It's Los Guys, and I'm teaming up with High Key Cloud to do it. What? Yo, it's Rich the Kid. I'm teaming up with High. Oh my God. I, I loved Rich the Kid, man. I really loved Rich the Kid. And Los Guys, I thought Los Guys was doing good. I thought Lil Skies was doing good, bruh. Like, chat, this is how I know if an artist is still... <laughs> this is how I, if I know if, like an artist is still doing his thing. If chat's like, yo, Lil Skies dropped. <laughs> People were typing Lil Skies dropped. Yo. What up? Are you... Sick? Hey, 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 no, come on, get up out of here. He's the man, the man, the man. Get up out of here. Oh, God. I think I already no. got the infection. I touched her ball. That was your ball that was on the step. Oh, okay. So, she literally is this mine? Of course. Thank you. Nice. Nice. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate you. You know I want them cups, so I'm going to let you live. <laughs> I'm going to let you live. Sick. Sick. <laughs> oh. Chat. Oh, my gosh. I'm not going to lie, y'all. Just, just, just. W like just W women, bro. So glad. I'm so glad I like out of all <laughs> out of all these trifling dirty heifers in the world. I got me a queen. A queen, bro. <laughs> a queen, man. Um, and not only that, yo chat, you, you like you know. You know you're you know you're lucky. You know you're lucky, okay, when not only does your wife really really show love and appreciate you but her sister just just show so much love so much love so much love man i appreciate it man oop oop i keep cloud to give away 10 not rich the kid man it's your boy big 14. okay no 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 i refuse i refuse bruh i refuse Maybe, maybe, what are they selling? Key Cloud to do a giveaway. Yo, it's Rich the Kid. I'm teaming up with High Key Cloud. Maybe High Key Cloud ain't that bad. Ain't no way that Trippy's doing that. And things ain't looking too good. So far, they've been giving away like 10,000. I'm assuming it's like a, it's like a matching thing. Like, or like maybe they get like extra money. So. Give away 10,000. I mean, Trippy got to at least be giving away twenty thousand, right? Thirty thousand, right? It's Trippy Red, right? It's, it's, it's Trippy Red. At least he got a better deal, right? <laughs> it's your boy Big Fourteen. We got a team up with High Key Clock, you know what I'm saying? And we're giving away ten K cash. Blue face, baby. Yeah, man. Well, this is not a surprising look. I'm not gonna lie. Trippy. There's no way Trippy. There's no way Trippy Red. No. I partnered up with High Key Clock. Wireless headphones. Trippy is doing good. Lil Xan promoting sketchy crypto coins. Yo, what's going on, guys? I want you to check out this new token called Marvin Inu. It's super dope, man, and they're about to take off. Now, I'm not gonna say it. I uh, never mind, because I swear. Okay. Six nine promoting multiple NFT scams. Blueface doing influencer boxing events. It's yeah, possible that's, that's that the crazy. pandemic hurt everyone's shows, and maybe these artists could have rode their wave a little longer. But now, huh? Uh, 
Uh, no, it's fine. Thank you. People are being... Somebody said it in chat. And yes, I, I literally thought he did. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I'm not gonna say it. Yonker Kid said it. Yonker Kid said it. Scroll up to see what Yonker Kid said. That's what I thought. I, that's what I thought. Very selective who they go out and see live. Now you scrambling and hoping to get hot again, but you forgot you only popped because you were riding trends. Now you old news and you going through regrets. Smoke Perp was caught buying Instagram followers. Cuff Boys noticed that every what? time his follower count dropped below 4 million, it would randomly shoot up by- Oh my god, I remember this. Didn't I react to this? No, I think I watched it and then, and then I talked about it or something like that multiple thousands he also tried to attack kanye on instagram for saying that he wrote i love it and yay owes him nine million dollars and kanye nigga you owe me like nine million dollars nigga hit my line nigga or my lawyer's gonna hit your lawyer nigga just doing anything for clout Lil Pump did the same thing, posted ridiculous pictures on the internet for attention, shaved his eyebrows, claimed he was going to start making rock music. In my opinion, he hit an all-time low when he decided to make a song with the YouTubers, the Dobre Brothers. Hit It If You Ooh. Know You Lit was the most awkward and horrible song I have ever heard. Pump visibly looked like he hated himself for- Huh? Can you have it? Can you have it? Yeah, yeah. Who was that? Who are these dudes? Doing the music video. Oh. Then he managed to get some attention when Trump called him Little Pimp. One of the big superstars of the world. Huh? Little Pimp. Sure, he could have genuinely been a supporter. He rode this way till the wheels fell off, bro. Even though he tweeted fuck Trump during his 2016 run, but that's fine. There's a dual party for a reason. Regardless, it was pretty clear that Lil Pump was scrambling to get hot and he would lean into whatever was getting him attention. Just like the whole reason he said fuck J. Cole in the first place. I'm just telling you what's probably gonna happen when you rapping about the type of shit you rapping about. It's a faster route to the bottom. I wish you good luck. I'm hoping for your sake that you ain't as dumb as you look. Surprisingly, the two actually had a one hour long sit down conversation one month after the record dropped to discuss their differences. That was like basically like the trend, like, you know? About saying f J. Cole, whatever, blah, blah. It was even like serious, like, I f with your shit. It's just hard, you know? Thank you, bro. I mean, they also would have heated up because she said it's real cold and it's gonna be nasty. And she said, no, you probably just eat anything, but let me just heat it up. Alright. Are you good? <laughs> I know you're not good. Alright. Thank you. Uh, yeah, it was, it was a little cold, but I was still gonna eat it though. Like it was still good. Um, heat up sushi, but chat, it's it's like chicken. It's like chicken inside the sushi with. I don't know how to explain it, bro. Okay, it's a little warm when I when you first get it, but I ain't gonna lie, a little pump kind of switched up, man. You kind of switched up, bro. And the thing is, J Cole. He he killed him with kindness, bro. He literally like low broed him. I mean, he's literally little bro, but he little broed him. I mean, I realized that at, in time. Right? He's like, you know, I fuck with your shit. Your shit's hard. You know, you do not you you do not listen to J Cole, bro. Who all trolling and shit? Yeah, for sure. Despite all the respectable and honorable game that J Cole tried to give, Lil Pump still did everything Cole predicted. These in bus. And today, Lil Pump is in denial. Do you, I fuck with J Cole? Yeah, this is the one. There's, I don't have no problems with him. Do you feel like he predicted kind of like what ended up happening with your rap career? Nope. No. Because I'm still here. Sure, Pump is still here in a physical sense, but an extremely small percentage of his audience is- To be fair, who wants to admit that? Like, no, like nobody wants to admit that, bro. What's up, The Real? The Real Don? He's interested in what he's gonna bring to us next. He's dropping his album in a month or so. Really? I think we can all agree. J. Cole's warning came true, and sadly, these rappers didn't take it seriously enough. The same thing happened to Fetty Wap. He made a series of horrible financial decisions, didn't evolve his sound, and even his own management may have sabotaged his career. But if you want to hear more about that, check out this video. Wow. The very last song on J. Cole's tw What a W, what a W transition, bro. Wait, wait. Fetty's back though now. Fetty's back though. That yams hit different. All right, thank please you. Please or please. Yeah, I got it, I got it, I got it. Good night, chat. Thank you. W's. <laughs> W's. <laughs> Can I get to the games? No, no, he, Fetty, Fetty's back now. Fe, Fetty's, he, he's creeping up. Like, he, he's doing it, he's doing his thing, bro. Can I get to the His yams? own management may have sabotaged his career, but if you want. Wait. Sweet. 
Yams. Okay, chat. Uh, I want to do search and destroy. He's in prison. Wait, what? Who's in prison? Wait, Fetty Wap's in prison? Locked up for life? Fetty Wap. This was three weeks ago. Wait, so this is recent. Wait, what? Fetty Wap. Wait. Fe uh... <gasps> what the fuck is this caption? What is this headline? Fetty Wap, R. Kelly, Gliss, Gliss Lane, Max, Maxwell, and more get Christmas meals in jail. What? Even from jail, it looks like locked up slices. It appears though, artists like Fetty Wap and R. Kelly, who are currently serving time, I thought he was out. How long? How long is he locked up for? The Fetty Wap got the song of the year right now. This shit banging like five years. Damn, that bro, that has to suck because that has to suck to have to go to jail and it kind of like ha like halts your um your growth and then you come back and you got like something coming up and then you have to go back to jail. Bro. Wap is going to serve a bare minimum of 1,825 days in prison, and he's facing up to 40 years for the crimes of conspiring to distribute over 500 grams. What? Grams of cocaine. But in 2015, he was on top of the world and had the music game in a chokehold. You heard at least one of his songs every day, multiple times per day for over a year straight. That is his true. first four songs he ever released debuted in the top 10 on the Billboard Hot Rap charts and remained in the top 10 simultaneously, something that was never done before. He even has the rare achievement of earning a diamond single, which is 10 million records sold. Fetty Wap made basically every wrong decision one could make throughout his entire career. He stayed loyal to the wrong people, made terrible financial decisions, and sabotaged his own career. Most people have no idea what even happened to him. How did Damn. he go from being a beloved superstar to a drug trafficking kingpin? Well, the story is even more tragic than we thought. Oh, Willie shit. Maxwell had all the odds stacked against him, starting with the day he went blind. He was born with- Oh, that's his- I was like, who is Willie- who is M Maxwell? Glaucoma, which in short causes fluid to build up in the eyes, putting pressure on the optic nerve and making it hard to see. At six months old, he had reconstructive eye surgery, and luckily the doctor was able to save one of them. Then at age 12, he decided he didn't like the prosthetic eye and embraced Come on, man, I'm eating, bro! Eye. I was born with glaucoma, and I lost the eye at six months, and I got reconstructive surgery when I was 12, uh -huh. and I just stopped wearing the prosthesis because I didn't want to look like everybody else. To make matters worse, he grew up on the rough streets of Patterson, New Jersey. 20 22nd and 12th street to be exact. Kids would bully him because of his eye, so he had to learn how to defend himself at an early age. However, he had one escape, and that was music. Willie played the drums alongside his father, his brother, and uncle in the local church. He was constantly surrounded by music and was putting on performances even as a child. He even took his talents to the school band, but Willie didn't like school, and the kids didn't like him, which led him to dropping out as a teenager. Oh, he got his nickname. Bro, I don't even look like him with the other eye. Named Fetty because he was always trying to get the money, but he never had a job, so he hit the streets to pay his bills. Where the his family didn't from? support his lifestyle, so he resorted to sleeping on friends' couches and floors. As if times couldn't get any harder, he had his first child. He was broke with no plan and destined for failure until he met Monty, who introduced a way out. Monty was a local rapper in Patterson who introduced Fetty to the music scene. P. Dice and Knit the Grit were other artists who had a little bit of buzz in the city. P. Dice, Monty, Fetty, and a few other 
others started calling themselves the Remy Boys, based Remy on their boy. love for Remy Martin's 1738 Cognac. The third song Fetty ever recorded was Trap Queen. He always knew it was a hit, but it went unnoticed for years. Mm. Nit the Grit saw potential in the group and decided to quit his own rap career and start a production company slash label called RGF Productions, and he signed them. Yeah, but Nit but... was new to the business, and he needed help promoting his artists. He got connected with Muscle Team Fuzz, who is an OG in Patterson, rapper, CEO, community leader, among other things. Fuzz took Nit under his wing, showed him how to move like a boss, and how to get the support of Patterson. Fetty getting involved with these guys would be the best and the worst thing that ever happened to him. Nit and the Remy boys would stand outside of Broadway Pizza and Patterson selling CDs. Fetty was okay with the traditional way of getting poppin' locally because his only goal was to get lit in his city. He never thought he had more potential than that, but once they took to the internet, everything changed. Damn, it's crazy because like, the internet literally changes things. And it's like, it's kind of weird seeing people still like stand outside and rap in front of artists when you can literally, I guess it's just a direct way to get to them, but like, they're not going to really care nine times out of 10, but it's like different now, now that you can like just tag a famous person or just DM it to them and spam them with it. Fetty posted Trap Queen on his SoundCloud and YouTube, then promoted it on Instagram every single day trying to make some noise online. Despite his efforts, it was mostly unnoticed, gaining about 1,000 streams per day. At the time, he- That's good though for like just spamming shit on Instagram. He also released 679 with Monty and P. Dice. Nit and Fuzz knew these guys were making hits, and they were using all their connections in New Jersey and New York City to get these songs played in the clubs. Fuzz's artist Franco linked up with Fetty to make the song Zoop. This one was getting even more traction than Trap Queen, with RGF and Muscle Team Entertainment. Yeah, true. It, it still makes sense because you can't, because you can still get blocked online. Like, the artist could just block you. But with that, you can just make a whole new another account. Or like, like, make an alternate account and just send him that. But yo, check out this dude, he's buzzing. But it's literally just you the whole time. Tame it working together, Patterson was unified and about to put New Jersey on the- It's kind of like people who donate. <laughs> There's been artists who donated to me acting like they're somebody else and be like, yo bro, you gotta check out this artist, da da da. Be like, yo, you forgot to change your account, bro. It's literally you. Map. By September 2014, Fetty Wap was a local star. Even in the middle of the internet age, Fetty managed to blow up the traditional way in his city. One month later, Bobby Schmurda, who was at the peak of his career, posted a video of himself singing Trap Queen on Instagram. Blogs started covering the song. That's he did all his you first need, bro. With Complex, and the internet was trying to figure out who this one eyed rapper was. He secured a record deal with 300 Entertainment. However, they gave him a small advance of 200000 because they didn't believe in his other songs. They only thought Trap Queen was a hit. 300 started pushing Trap Queen to radio stations all over the country. And in the beginning of 2015, the music video started gaining over 200,000 views per day. Funk Flex debuted a remix with French Montana on Hot 97. Rihanna said in an interview that it was the last song she purchased. Then Kanye brought out Fetty to perform at the Rock City Classic in New York City. Shortly after- Damn, that shit just happened like that. Trap Queen debuted at number 86 on the Billboard Hot 100, one year after it was posted and two years after it was recorded. He went from local legend to mainstream household name in just a few months, but he didn't want all the fame for himself. Like, I had a plan on how this shit was supposed to go. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that was supposed to be Monty's record. That was Monty's breakthrough record. Like, he was supposed to, boom, all right, Fetty Wap. Fetty Wap goes on tour, Monty goes on tour. You know what I'm saying? It was it supposed to be... Fetty Wap and then Monty on the tour with Fetty Wap. The record he was talking about was My Way. The now three times platinum record was supposed to be Monty's breakout single. It was actually Monty's song to begin with, but Drake heard it in the club, asked Fetty through Instagram DMs if he could remix a song. Fetty asked Drake if he could just leave Fetty on the hook, remove his verse, and just have Drake and Monty on the verses. But the OVO team kicked Monty off the song and released it on SoundCloud without Fetty's approval and spoiled Monty's debut. The song was blowing up on the internet, but neither Fetty nor 300 Records ever really promoted the song. It wasn't even available on iTunes or streaming because Fetty didn't like the way Drake handled that business. Instead, they re-released the old track 679 to focus more on the Remy boys. Yo, he's a real, he's a W man's for that. He, he like, he's a W man's for like really looking out for his homie. 679 hit Billboard immediately. Then a month later, his fourth single, Again, also hit the top 10 on the Billboard Hot Rap Charts. By mid-2015, Fetty had his first four singles in regular rotation on the radio, but the fame never got to his head. When he made his first million dollars, he gave it to Knit the Grit for signing him to RGF and making all of this possible. But Fetty spent his money recklessly. The most superstar thing I've done, I spent a lot of money. I can right. say that. 
on this particular trip, I was like eight million on a one trip. Yeah. Well, we go to the hotel, and the hotel like, yo, we don't have enough rooms, and I'm like, you know what? Uh, I don't want to hear this. Right. I'm buying I'm the hotel. Like, yo, I need a house right now. Right. Like, you want to rent it? A I'm house. Like, no, I'm just gonna buy it. Oh like, man, I got to sure? good. I'm like. Yeah, I'm just gonna buy it. I was doing like 150,000 a month bills, but I was see that's the dumbest shit I was doing. A hundred and fifty thousand dollars a month on bills. Yo, it like that just stressed me out. Like, matter of fact, yeah, if I had to, it was jewelry and like apartments. I had a lot of fucking apartments. I was traveling with. 14, 15 niggas, 16 niggas, maybe sometimes 30 niggas. My worst shopping experiences was Barney's when the Balmain shit came out. Yeah. We're talking about 13, 14, $1,500 pair of jeans, bro. I'm buying 30 pairs. Barmains? Barmains. How do you spell that? Balmain jeans. Yo, chat. What the fuck? These look like some jeans at fucking Fashion Nova, bro. You can get these shits at Fashion Nova for like $60, man. Oh, they fell off? That's even worse. That's even worse, bro. That's like if you dropped hella money on like fucking FUBU or some shit, man. Sean John, man. Echo Unlimited, bro. Like, what? They're jeans. Now, mind you, I'm only wearing one pair. But we spending 45... I'm spending 45000 on this motherfucker on jeans, bro. I ain't even get my shirt yet. Fetty would travel with 15 to 30 people, paying for all of their expenses, buying them all chains, spending $45,000 on jeans just so everyone could have a pair, bringing them all on stage during his shows. He wanted to show everyone the lifestyle, not because he felt pressure, but because he genuinely loved his people. When his debut album was finalized, he took the Drake feature off of My Way to help Monty, which seems honorable, but this genuinely hurt his career, and Nit the Grit didn't step in to try to force Fetty to do it. Drake and Fetty never talked again. One thing about me at that time bro nobody could tell me shit like at that at that time in my life i get he trying to be a w man's but like damn like what's the reciprocation though like what did he do for him what did the dude do for him to make him do that though like what is he giving like i don't know bro it seemed really one-sided bro if that was a real if that was a w man's on the other guy's part he'd be like nah bro like it's kind of fucked up that he took me off but yo like, that's Drake, bro. Like, go ahead, bro. You good, man. You good. Like, like 2015, 2016, you couldn't tell me nothing. The self Bro, what are you watching? I, bro, I didn't know Fetty Watt was in jail. I, I, like, I didn't know he was in jail, and now I'm, like, trying to figure out what the fuck happened, man. This part was me. That wasn't for nobody else. That was me. I didn't know I, he was this reckless. I could have did to make my shit better, but I ain't want to. Like, bro, a lot of shit that I went through, I'm, I, like I said, I'm happy that all that shit happened. But yeah, for the most part, a lot of that shit was my fault, bro. Like, Unfortunately, in the music industry, you have to make sacrifices. Fetty didn't care. His management let him be the boss and make the decisions. He felt more like a regular dude than an industry dude. He hated the idea of connecting with celebrities and networking. He thought it was all fake. He wanted to be with his real friends in New Jersey. He gave everyone from Jersey a feature for free. He hated interviews. He was quiet and humble. He focused on everyone but for the free skis. Yeah, he's got a good heart. He's just in the wrong industry that like being a rapper is the wrong place to have a good heart. That's the wrong industry to be in to have a good heart, bro himself which is respectable but not marketable and not good for business unfortunately no matter how much love he showed to the people around him despite all oh my god he would have been an amazing doctor though <laughs> he'd have been an amazing doctor dude just is so kind the money he shared it got bad for fetty and they turned on him yeah everybody got that shit everybody is if you from the hood and you make it out it's the hood curse it's like um <clears throat> so it, it go like this right so first is that shit ain't gonna be literally, uh, then it's gonna be like, 
Oh, he got some shit going. And then it's like everybody supporting you. Oh, yeah, we gonna make it. He about to make it. And then when you make it, it's like, all right, well, he ain't come back and do this. And he ain't do da 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 And that's the hook, Chris. Fetty took care of a lot of people, gave them money, gave them opportunities. What they did with that was up to them. He realized some people Fetty took them- got a good heart, but bro, you can't be spending 2K on jeans for you and your 30 of homeboys. And why didn't any of his homeboys say, I'm on you blowing too much money at once? That's what I'm saying. Like, why did nobody around him be like, bro, 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 I get- I can stay at my auntie's, bro. You don't got to buy out this whole, like, you don't got to buy a whole house, bro. Like, it ain't that deep, man. I literally could call up somebody, man. I I'll stay at their crib. It is not that deep, bro. You're not about to buy a whole house just for this vacation for the weekend. <laughs> like, you you're out your mind. You're like, you're out of your mind. Yo, you're buying all them jeans. Hey, hey man, I'm, I'm good, bro. Like, 2K? No, you already spent, like, no, no, no. I'm good, bro. Like, we just had to, like, pack some, bro. They got some cool shit in there, man. Uh, Forever 21, bro, I'll probably find something there, but like, I'm not about to let you spend all this money, you know, for some jeans. The money and expected more handouts, and some people used it to genuinely kickstart their own careers. But the first fallout started with P. Dice, who was on the last verse of 679, in which Fetty removed from his album. P. Dice wasn't around much, and most people don't even remember him as part of the Remy Boys. Without two mans for letting him be such a W mans. Dice was, if you gonna be a Remy boy, be a Remy boy till it's time for you to branch off, branch off the right way and bring your team up, my nigga. Mm. Don't come do shows here, do shows there and think I'm gonna pay you like I'm paying everybody else. It don't work that way, my nigga. I could do three shows and be good for a couple months, my nigga. You just can't wait for that. That wasn't what you wanted. That wasn't, that wasn't, it was, it was taking too long. For one, but where was the authenticity back from his homeboys? Exactly. W man's but at what cost? Exactly. P Dice. Marty? Marty's well taken care of. But Dice says that the beef originated with Tax G, a New Jersey rapper who claims that Fetty Wap stole his sound and look. Then Dice got into an alter New Jersey rapper who How the fuck you stole your look? The nigga got one eye! Claims that Fetty Wap stole his sound and look. Then Dice got into an altercation with Tax G, and in response, they pressed Fetty Wap and said, Either we go after Dice or all of y'all. And Fetty dropped Dice to avoid the beef with Tax G. We don't know if Dice is telling the truth, but a video did go on the internet of him getting jumped. They ripped me with it at first, then I hit the ground, pop back up. That's when that's when the tussle started. And one of them was like, Yo, what you wanna do? Da -da 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 -da. Damn, he like a whole like fucking father now. God damn. I mean, the other one's like, nah, I ain't that serious. And that's when the phone came out. That's when the recorder started, so. Now people knew this was serious. Pete Dice there's started having plotting. A good heart, and then there's doing charity work, my nigga lol. Yeah, like, bro, you kind of just giving people money for free. His to be, like, they're giving you, they're hopping on your songs, who is like really one of the biggest artists right now, for free. Like, I get it's your homies, but like, bro, for free? Get back. In the meantime, Fetty had another big song with Lil Dicky. I don't even like. I don't even like accepting shit from free for free from y'all, bro. Like there'll be some people who will make uh like, like I'll ask them for something, uh like a like a logo or even just my intro, bro. I just asked for a new intro, and somebody was like, uh, I was like, yo, how uh how much, bro? He was like, bro, come on, bro. I've been watching you for a while, bro. For free, I got you for free. I was like, what? <laughs> Like, bro, look, I appreciate that, but I wouldn't even feel comfortable asking for, a, like, a whole new intro and just having you do that for free. So, like, I, I don't know how people can just accept things without, like, doing their, like, or not, like, feeling like that they need to do something in return. Because a lot of people, yes, they will do something out of the kindness of their heart, but it's like, at the same time, bro, I gotta, like, I gotta do something for you, bro. Little Dicky! Pete Dice started plotting his get back. In the meantime, Fetty had another big song with Lil Dicky called Save That Money. A song with David Guetta, a big song with Kid Ink. Rappers give free verses and shit all the time. Yeah, I know that, but I'm just saying, like, there has to be a point. Like, it has to come to a point where it's like, you, you like, you're doing something. Like, you just, it's the homie, so you're just doing that. And then, like, them just using you. Because they know you're going to let them do it for free. It's kind of like, yo, uh, yo, I don't got to, uh... I don't got money for this hotel. Oh, bro, don't worry about it, bro. This nigga, this nigga always like looks out, like so we could just stay at his place. Really? Like, should I ask him? Nah, nah, nah. He just, he like literally just gonna do it. Like he just does it all the time. It's like you gotta put your foot down sometimes. Otherwise, you start getting used. You know? Cause one with K Camp and a it, it's it, it's like that when back when I was like really like into the music shit heavy, and there will be people I would like react to, 
And I'd be like, no, no, bro. Like, I got you, bro. Like, I'm, I'm going to check this, sh this shit out, bro. And, like, labels would come to me like, yo, how much for you to do? I'd be like, no, no. I fuck with him. Like, that's my guy. I, I got y'all. I got y'all. But then it got to a point where it's like, okay, like, <laughs> business. Hold on. Business. Because a lot of people are like, yo, check out this person. Go ahead. and re Can you react to this person? I'm like, hold on. Hold on. Slow your motherfucking roll, my nigga. Like, I am not out here to just be some, some fucking free ad advertisement to push somebody. Like, you got to put your foot down. Otherwise, people will start to try to use you, bro. And another huge one with Fifth Harmony called In My Head. He cruised through 2016 with a bunch of big features. Oh my God, 2016? Mm. His last big solo song was called Wake Up, which some people consider a hit, but he wasn't even coming close to matching the takeover he had the year prior. Then he found Taylor Swift? What? It... What? I'm forgetting some shit. <laughs> Fetty Wap was really that nigga, Taylor Swift? Now his own label could have been preventing his growth. Mm. Nit the Grit has to sign off on everything that Fetty does. Fetty was loyal to Nit since he brought him up from nothing. Apparently Future, Justin Bieber, and Beyonce all wanted to take Fetty on a world tour during his peak. But Nit tried to negotiate having the Remy Boys and RGF artists on the bill. And obviously they weren't interested. They just- Chuck, at what point? At what point does it go, does it become, like, does it go from him being a W man's for trying to put all the homies on to him being an L man's for blocking one homie's success? Like, I get it. You, you're trying to put on for the whole team, for the whole team as a collective. But you can still do the same thing if there is even at least one person who's already got their foot in the door and is already in the door. That's when you can like, you know, have them have homies on a verse or some shit like that. But bro, to turn down Beyonce on tour and all these people, like, bro, that's that's the biggest fumble. Just wanted Fetty. Allegedly, Nit denied all of these tours and had Fetty go on his own solo tour with the other RGF artists so that Nit could grow his roster instead of catapulting Fetty into even more fame. Nit uh. says that Fetty was the one who didn't want to do it and that he wanted to stay loyal to his guys. I'm not gonna lie. That doesn't sound too far from what, how he already talks. That doesn't sound too far from how Fetty already talks. So that might be, that might actually be true. Cause he was already saying, uh, he'd rather be around his homies cause other people are kind of weird. Like artists are weird. I'm not lying. I'm not gonna lie about that, bro. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I don't know, is Beyonce though? Yeah. Yeah. Nit also admits that he had very little business experience and knowledge. He also admits that the lawyer he hired to represent them all the way back to the first deal with 300 wasn't exactly the most top of the line entertainment lawyer. If Fetty had gone on any one of those tours, his buzz probably would have lasted much longer. Yeah. So it's unclear if Nit was trying to sabotage them intentionally, his lack of experience hurt them, or if it was Fetty just being stubborn. Because as we know, after 2016, Fetty Wap seemingly disappeared. Damn. But he wasn't even welcome in his hometown. P. Dice linked up with Muscle Team Fuzz, and they condemned Fetty from coming back to Patterson. So Fetty Wap, did you like that? And you saying you you run the city? We gonna be on your block shooting this video. You know what I'm saying? Right. With with your niggas. A bunch of Patterson rappers film. What? Hold on, hold on. Dice linked up with Muscle Team Fuzz, and they condemned Fetty from coming back to Patterson. So Fetty Wap, did you like that? And you saying you you run the city? We gonna be on your block shooting this video. I'm not gonna lie, like, bro, I get it. It's like street shit, so I wouldn't understand. <laughs> but I don't know how, like, you as a grown ass man could be in a room full of other grown men and claim a city that you literally do not own. Like, claim a city that you literally don't own. It's just so weird fighting over land that doesn't belong to you. You know what I'm saying? Right. With, with Joe a bunch of Patterson rappers filmed a diss track on 22nd and 12th where Fetty is from just to prove that Fetty was not a real gangster. Bro, he looks grown as hell. He looks like a, like, he looks grown. Holy shit. And he didn't run anything in Patterson. A few months later, there would be a robbery involving Fetty where three people got shot with non-critical injuries. His chain got stolen and Fuzz posted himself on Instagram wearing it. Fetty allegedly reported the stolen property to the police, which got Fuzz locked up. Fetty even dissed P. Dice in his 2017 track called A. But most of you are probably wondering why Fetty would still be beefing with the guys from his hood after two years of being mainstream. Well, Fetty's pride started to act 
jacked up. He thought he did nothing but good for his city, did everything he could to help as many people as possible, they don't and care. they still were not happy. They don't he said care. in 2017 he started to wake up and realize how messed up his life was. Like 2017, that's, that shit Thank was you. like a different year for me. You feel me? Like all jokes aside, like... Pretty sure Fetty's daughter passed away somewhat recently as well. Damn, really? Bro, how old is Fetty? God damn! This is like the worst series of events ever. I was a little fucked up that year, man. Like I was, uh, you see, I started number chasing. So in my mind, I'm all he went through all this shit. He's only thirty one. Like to have to go through all this, and now he's fucking in jail, facing forty years in prison, bro. Does he have any other kids? I'm like, oh, I'm done. It's over. Fetty Wap is over with. Like. <laughs> Fetty was scrambling to get his finances in order. He had to clean Damn. house, downsize his team, and make sure he doesn't go broke. He looked at Nit. He started to question what he even did for him in the first place. Nit gets paid before Fetty does, so he needed to assess if he was actually helping his career. Literally since 2017. I ain't gonna lie, this, this shit's stressing me out, bro. I feel so bad because he's like, he, he seems like just such a genuine person, and like, look where that got him. It just gets you fucked over, bro. I'm not saying you shouldn't be genuine in life, but like be genuine to the right people. This shit's so fucking, this is a headache. And Fetty hasn't been on good terms with the man who pays him and has to approve every song, every show, every brand deal, literally everything he does. How can a career progress from there? Well, it can't. By 2018, everyone forgot about Fetty Wap. Granted. I actually don't know what? Most of this happened behind closed doors. People have very fond memories of him. He didn't go out sad. He didn't embarrass himself. He just kind of faded away and nobody really asked any questions. I fell off musically by being popular, but I, 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 I built myself to be able to, to, to bring myself back up. Despite spending money recklessly, Fetty prides himself on being very good with his money. But the charges he was found guilty on strongly suggest that it wasn't just his music money that kept him rich all these years. Ooh. In October of 2021, Fetty Wap was arrested after he got off stage at Rolling Loud in New York. He was charged with conspiracy to distribute and possess controlled substances. The press release showed that the officers seized 16 kilograms of cocaine, 2 kilograms of heroin, numerous fentanyl pills, two 9mm handguns, a rifle, a 40 caliber pistol, and ammunition. Maxwell, along with five others, allegedly trafficked more than 100 kilos of opioids, including fentanyl, heroin, cocaine, and crack, from the West Coast and sold the deadly drugs in New Jersey and this nigga was a drug lord. And across Long Island, officials said. Now this is big time drug dealing, not just some small operation. However, a couple weeks later, he got out on a $500,000 bond. It was a big story for sure, but I feel a lot of his mainstream audience didn't even know about this. Plus, he I, bro, I had no idea. <laughs> No idea. He went right out and did a bunch of podcasts, interviews, and went on a press tour for his 2021 <laughs> Crack! <laughs> Cocaine! Album, The Butterfly Effect. This album slipped totally under the radar because it had no hits on it. Fast forward in summer of 2022, his bond was revoked after allegedly threatening to end someone while pointing a strap at them on a FaceTime call. So he was arrested again. In August, he pled guilty to one count of intent to distribute controlled substances, including cocaine, heroin, and fentanyl. He still is yet to be sentenced, but he's facing a minimum of five years. Okay, so that's the five years. But the biggest question everyone wants answered, why? Is this a setup? Is he actually a kingpin drug lord? Why didn't he just make music? Well, mm. I obviously don't know anything about the streets, but sure. I did find a clip explaining the mentality a little bit. I'm sure Fetty could still get 20,000 a show, but that ain't enough for the lifestyle he created. Can't keep up. So you like, I'm gonna take my last. I'm gonna put it here. I got my little cousin, them, my little homie, them. Shit, I don't gotta touch this shit. I'm gonna make a play, buy some bags, put these niggas on. We got straps, we good. And that fast, you're in organized crime. People assume that Fetty was getting money in the streets and that's why he didn't need to keep making music. Maybe that's true. Maybe all the beefs with the guys in Patterson was not actually about music, popularity, and jealousy. Maybe something a little bit deeper and darker. Maybe Fetty Wap is just not who we expected him to be. Or maybe he's being set up. 
which in that case, maybe his management is the reason why his career spiraled. They never believed he would be bigger than Trap Queen, and he had to fight to prove himself to his own team. Then when he made multiple hits, his pride got in the way of advancing any further. Maybe his own ego got in the way, and he just simply did not want to be famous. In one year, he made enough money to last him a lifetime, and maybe he was okay with that. Just wanted to focus on being a normal person, just like you and me. Oh my Blueface's god. Blueface's music stop, stop, stop. career is at an Jesus, man. That's so That's that sucks. Bro, I heard the Yam song and I'm like, "Yo, oh shit. Okay, Fetty back." And the niggas in chat like, "Yo, what you mean? He's in jail." What? Like what? Y'all reaction niggas relentless. What the fuck does that mean? Yo, this shit sucks. Yeah, no, that was a roller coaster. I ain't gonna lie. This need he need like a he need like a like a documentary or something. Damn. Let's watch another. Bro, I'm not trying to get into the first of all, let me turn this off. Okay. This nigga blue face. I don't agree with this though. How Blueface ruined his career on purpose. Now he needs Chris Sean. It seemed like I feel like it's the other way around, bro. I don't know what happened with her, but it's like it seemed like she's like fiending and, and like needs him. He like I don't know what type of toxic type of shit they got going on, but god damn, bro. God damn, that's 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 horrible. Watch it. Okay. Uh Mm. All time low. You only ever hear about him these days when he gets into a physical altercation in public. That is true. I can't remember the last time I heard about him, it was because of the song. With his girlfriend, Krishan Rock. However, people knew Blueface's career was destined for failure back in 2019 when he said this in his first major interview. Oh, you saw the Cash Money through Cash Money? Uh, Cash Money West. Oh, so that is through Birdman and, and all I know is Cash Money West and Wack 100. I, <laughs> it could, I, I, you gotta ask Wack about the other other people involved. You haven't seen your own paperwork? Nah, I seen it, but <laughs> Wack showed me. I ain't, I ain't see the, you know. It's very clear Ooh. from this interview that Blueface does not know the details of his record deal. Ooh. He didn't realize that he was signed to four record labels at once. What? He knows he signed to Cash Money West, which is a division or imprint of Cash Money Records, founded in 2018 by Birdman and WAC 100. But Cash Money Records is distributed by Republic Records, which is owned by Universal Music Group. Now God damn, this subdivision within a subdivision! Like, what is happening? How much money does he end up making at the end of the day? What the There are plenty of successful artists who are signed to multiple labels. Okay. However, there is no debate that when your money is being split up four times before you get it, yeah. it's going to be much harder to make profit. That's what I'm saying. Like, what? The obvious piece of advice is that you should never sign a contract that you didn't read or you don't understand. But it's much more complicated than that. Signing a bad deal might actually be a good strategy for some artists. Blueface signed his deal in 2018 thanks to the success of his breakout single, Respect My Crippin. The music video Video dropped on World Star Hip Hop, and Blueface became a viral meme with his offbeat rapping, high pitched voice, and silly lyrics. People say I rap off beat. I say I just rap to a different rhythm of the beat, and it, it just makes it sound, you know, that much different. So I think that's really what it is. They just don't know it yet, but I just let them know. At first, it seemed like everyone was making fun of him, but a lot of people, including myself, listened to his music as a guilty pleasure. The controversial virality yeah, I... had listeners diving into his back catalog. Yeah, I... Record labels were all eager to sign Blueface, and in December of 2018, he ended up with Cash Money West. So why was signing this bad deal potentially a good thing for Blueface? Yo, thank you for well, the his sub, label bro. knew that his older song, Tatiana, had way more potential than Respect My Crippin. Tatiana the label would connect, crazy. connect him to popular West Coast rapper YG for a remix, as well as a lyrical lemonade video. Then they pumped it out to radio stations bust all over down, the country, down. which led to his first Billboard Hot 100 entry. To keep momentum, they down. got Cardi B on another remix with another lyrical. That did happen. That's the honor. Hey, hey, hey. Two, 242 million. 
Lemonade video, which was the first time Cole Bennett made two videos to the same song. Without the label, they go. Blueface would most likely not have gotten those big features, those music videos, or all the radio play which kept Tatiana on the Billboard Hot 100 for 20 weeks. Then he secured a spot as a double XL freshman in 2019. This high profile publication co signs six to 10 artists as being next up in the music industry. Jesus, they man. typically only pick artists who are signed to major labels. By mid 2019, Blueface was a household name in the rap world. Now that he had the fame, all he needed to do was grind to gain more leverage, escape his record deal, and make millions. However, we now know that Blueface did not have an escape plan because this was his peak. After 2019, he made a key choice that would start his slow demise. Mm. His debut studio album would only sell 12,000 units in its first week. Find the Beat, released in March of 2020, and despite oh my God, I remember this. features from Lil Baby, Gunna, Polo G, and Ellie Choppa, and Da Baby, it still flopped. I actually remember remember this, and I kind of I liked some of the songs. Like I liked a couple of the songs. I remember. Instead of grinding harder to make music to resonate with fans, he changed his focus to something else, OnlyFans. While on set filming a music video for a song off the album, some dancers Blueface had hired began fighting in his house, which sparked the idea for Blue Girls Club, oh. a makeshift OnlyFans reality show where he invites girls into his home and films their every- Jesus Christ. Move. For a monthly subscription of $50, oh! more than triple the standard Netflix fee, viewers could watch these women repeatedly fight and party all night long. While Blue. Oh my gosh, she was so small, bro. She was so small. Face pockets all the cash, and the girls get paid in the form of clout. As you could guess, the show was a total disaster from the start. The very first episode started like this. Damn, y'all late. They already fighting. I ain't gonna lie, that's a fire introduction though, bro. The very first episode started like this. Damn, y'all late. They already fighting. Insider was able to speak with five women involved in the show, Damn, which they claimed tiny, exposure bro. and connections within the- Yeah, I know she was like, she was on track. She was, I don't know, she was like very athletic. And then- industries they were interested Fucking in didn't always materialize. Instead, they said they encountered a turbulent environment in which they were exposed to near constant conflict without pay or medical or psychological professionals. I mean, y'all agreed to do this shit though. One contestant broke her leg within the first three days of filming, while another girl even said she was assaulted eight times, but also her leg within the first- She slipped on the floor trying to break up a fight. Three days of filming. Oh my gosh, hold on, hold on, hold on. While she lost she lost her tooth on the show that's how she lost her tooth from the show oh my god well, another girl even said she i always thought it was like something like else i thought it was from when she was younger and she just always wore a fake tooth it happened yo he literally was assaulted eight times, but also admitted she doesn't regret it since she gained 54,000 followers on Instagram. That's what I'm saying. Holy shit. Holy shit. That's, that, 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 that's what I'm saying. That's the mindset of these women. That's the mindset of the women who like agree with this. They don't fucking care. As long as they got the clout that they wanted, that's why they did it for free. I mean, I don't care though, because I got over 54,000 subscribers, like followers. Like what? They're not even subscribers, just followers, bro. It's a sick world we live in. It's estimated that Blueface was making between one hundred to two hundred thousand dollars per month from the four thousand subscribers to his show. Considering he wasn't paying the women, and the quality of the production was around the same as a typical YouTube vlog, it's safe to assume. Yeah, this shit looked like it was shot with a fucking iPhone. Assume his profit margins were high, and he was likely making way more money on this than he ever did from music. Since he was focused on the show, the music he was releasing was lackluster. I'm not gonna lie, it's kind of smart, bro. I mean. It's kind of smart, bro. What did he say? What did he say? What did he say? I think he was just having a conversation with somebody. Young boy. He literally just had a conversation with young boy. I don't know what the fuck they were on. But young boy was like, you, you get, you, you get to the old baddest bitches. I get to my baddest bitches. And we make a show and see who got the baddest bitches. Uh, <laughs> he's on the fifth season. Are you, wait, are you dead ass? Wait, he still does the show? He still does the show? Why? And, and second of all, why be? Why be? Don't you got a whole wife, man? He got a whole wife and child. You, 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 bitch. Aside. Let me get 10 of my baddest bitches. 
From his feature on DDG's track, Moonwalking in Calabasas, Blueface's music was falling on deaf ears. However, in 2020, he did meet his now girlfriend, Krishan oh, Rock, no. who was among the 10 women casted for- That's her? Unrecognizable. Is that Kiki Palmer? <laughs> uh, shout out to Kiki and her baby. Blue Girls Club, and is now the reason why Blueface is constantly in the news. Mm. Krishan Rock is one of 12 siblings. She grew up on the rough streets of Baltimore, Maryland, and survived a very abusive and toxic childhood. Damn. She was a gifted track and field athlete throughout high school and was on pace to go to a D1 college. Also during this time, she was building a decent sized Instagram following. She went to a two year university in California and was taking track and field seriously, but knew she longed to be famous. To what? Happen. to relish in the glamorous Hollywood life. Ultimately, she dropped out of school when she was scouted for a show called Ultimate Tag. I'm the youngest in the competition. I've been through more than most. It was a struggle growing up and I was even homeless. Wow, it's weird hearing her talk like and understand her. And it's not like every time she talks, when she, it sounds like she lost her voice. Netflix saved me. It was like an outlet for me to Damn! put all my stress, all my pain on the track. I want to win ultimate tag and put myself through college and I'm going to win tonight. She won the game show, which earned her $10,000 and she was able to live off that for a little before submitting her audition tape to be on Blueface's reality show. Oh no, that's when it all went wrong. That's when it all went wrong, bro. <sighs> Krishan quickly became the star of Blue Girls Club, basically because she was willing to fight anyone. She even lost her front tooth during a fight in the house. She started doing interviews and getting her IG followers up. At first, Blueface and Krishan weren't a couple. They just had a working relationship. He even signed her to help her music career. Talk to us about what you saw in rock that made you want to get behind her, start a movement, support her as an artist, etc. Uh, I just saw all the star qualities in her that uh, I once had. I wasn't always like... Musically the best, but I was a star, so hmm. for sure she's a star. So does that mean Rock's money is being split up six ways now? Never Bro, mind. how After did her accent and cadence change when she met Blueface Man? I don't know. I, 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 I like... I, I, don't, I don't know, bro. I'm gonna be honest, though. She was on a TV show, so it's like, she probably, like, uh... Uh... As you say, is lack, for lack of uh, proper words, she... Probably her white voice. Uh, so she's probably like talking, you know, oh my God, this is bad. Like, yeah, she's like drunk. She's like drunk most of the time. She's, uh, literally there's just videos of her. Just there's videos of her throwing up, bro. Like, oh j j God, like just throwing up on the, on the side of the street or throwing up and it's on the side of a car is just bad, bro. She released a few songs. Blueface took her onto Aiden Ross's stream for some extra promotion, but it did not go well. Blue oh my God. Oh my God. Wait. This is when I first seen her and I didn't even know it was her. This is the first time this this is when I had first seen her and I didn't even know who, like who that was. Face and Krishan come on to Aiden's stream. That's crazy looking at it now. And immediately start making fun of him. At first it's just harmless jokes and Aiden goes along with it. But then they push him to the background, grab his speaker, and start blasting Krishan's newest song. Oh Blue my face Yeah, nah, they was doing him they was doing him crazy. Man's Aiden to dance. <laughs> Aiden went along with the jokes because he knew it would be funny. Yeah. However, he had about 250,000 live viewers, and Krishan was getting all this free promotion while being extremely rude. Aiden's viewers did not like Nothing seeing him changed. getting bullied on his own stream. Who you be talking to? Okay, okay, all right, all right. You know, you'd be like low-key disrespectful while trying. I know you ain't talking. Wait, what? <laughs> I know it sounds silly, but Krishan and Blueface being rude to Aiden genuinely impacted their reputation to the youth. Aiden has one of the most loyal followings on the internet. Whoever is cool with Aiden, his followers also support heavily. They had the opportunity to gain potentially hundreds of thousands of new supporters, but instead they tried to act all cool, which led to all of his followers despising both of them. Despite this, Fans thought Blueface was making a comeback with his music. His verse on Better Days is probably the best verse he has ever made. That's Blueface true. has the potential to make such good music, and this right here is an example. Along with another song with DDG called BGC. It seemed like Blueface had a creative spark. Instead of continuing the music grind, he decided to do a TikToker boxing event. Many people- And who was this guy? Who, who was this dude? Why a famous- Yeah, I saw the video. I saw when he knocked out her, fa her father or some shit. But I think that was like part of a reality show. So it's like, I don't even know if that was like real or not. 
to be honest. Rapper and self-admitted gang member would fight a TikToker. Some TikTok or maybe, guy. Or maybe he genuinely wanted to challenge himself. He won the fight. He was allegedly only paid $25,000, but I can't imagine him doing this event for that small of a paycheck. Then again, when your music money is getting split five ways and it's underperforming, 25K might be a good payday. He even started his own. I mean, 25K... 25k for a fight that you know you're gonna win though that's not bad though own restaurant blues fish and soul Ow! which had mostly positive reviews it became an affordable soul food spot in la and stayed open for over a year today google says it is temporarily closed so i don't really know how successful that was but at this point it seems clear that blueface is not just a rapper he isn't working on albums or trying to make a musical legacy he is casually putting out singles to maintain his celebrity lifestyle blue girls club returns and this time it gets crazy oh no hold on Look at DDG. Uh, sorry, I got kind of tired. Maintain his celebrity lifestyle. Blue Girls Club returns. And this time, it gets crazier. More fights and more chaos. A clip of the girls sleeping on bunk beds and living in dirty conditions went viral. He was also saying that the girls had to get tattoos of him or else they had to go home. People what? were accusing him of starting a cult. Now we know they weren't being held against their will. They wanted to be there. Exactly. We know that. We know that. Cause they can say no, bro. They they did not have to get the tattoo. That's when you you usually usually one would wake up and say no, I'm not fucking doing that shit. But they chose to do that, okay? For the fame and and also it's not like they was off the street. Cause if they was homeless, homeless people would like be willing to do anything. These were women, home girl, bro. Krishan Cr Krishan Rock was literally in college, won a game show. And like, w like, was her trajectory was like this, and she chose to just say fuck it and get on this show. And notoriety. An Instagram Damn. live went viral where Blues manager Wack 100 tried to kick Krishan out of the house for her bad hygiene and bad attitude. In this fiasco, we learned that Blueface allegedly dropped Krishan and was not helping her music career. People were confused because they thought Blue and Krishan were on good terms. They seemed to be very close. A few weeks later, the mother of Blue's firstborn son announced that she was pregnant again. So he was expecting another child. Oh my God. This derailed Krishan and it was about to get ugly. Krishan and Blueface have the tendency to post every facet of their- I forgot he even- like, I forgot he, he was even with her. Expose? Yeah, yeah. Oh, what? Oh, expose your nigga whack before you lie on me. God don't like ugly. Talking about my work ethic wasn't there. You a clown. Like, you know what's up. Just say you can't be a manager because you're an artist. You had no clue how to show me. And when it came to certain- Shit, you was bugging. Then talking about while I'm with my baby mama, boy, you know damn well you wasn't with her. Cap, 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 cap. It's hella deep. I had to run away before y'all was making me cool. Da, da, da. I go, what the fuck? Their relationship on social media. Any in my life is obligated to submit to me. That is the text message that Blueface sent to Krishan. She posted this long back and forth feed of text where Blue is trying to break her. Oh my gosh, she leaked the whole thing. I'm not any bitch. I'm Christine. Not rock, Krishan. Krishan is any bitch. You not the only female female name Krishan. God damn, why she leaked these, bruh? Why the hell she leaked these, man? Yeah, I am. If you say so, I won't contest stupidity. Krishan, she doxed herself. Uh, Krishan, I know that. I know that's not you, Gina. Malone. It's only one. She does. She does got a point there. She does. She does have a point there. Cause who in their right mind? Never mind. Uh, but you gonna respect. Uh, but you gone respect was. But you gone respect was going on. I don't care what your name is. You be any nigga then. You must be any nigga then. I am definitely any nigga. Anybody can be replaced. You got lots to learn. Life don't stop for nobody. If you die tomorrow, motherfuckers gonna wake up the next day and life is gonna continue. Well, he not. You know. He not he not wrong there. Yeah, the grammar is kind of crazy. L reader, it's L English. I, I like I can't read when I when I can barely like understand like what what like what's happening. Look, it says but you gon respect. So it's like gone cuz cuz like I'm reading it how the words are are meant to be pronounced. But you gon respect. So it's like is respect gone or is like are you gon like gonna like okay. Anyway. Uh blah blah, you wasn't humble yesterday getting all big like that blah blah. I'm not flipping nothing. I'm telling you like it is. It ain't nothing to flip. You was wrong and not submissive about it. So motherfucker gotta use force, period. Ain't nothing to it. Whatever. 
You the one making it all big, trying to bring up the details, and nigga ain't thinking about that. I left that with everybody else. I did yesterday. Today is a new day. I'm over it. Moving on. I won't play like that. Okay. Oh, wait. I won't, I won't play like that with MK. Okay. Uh, You wasn't playing with... with you wasn't playing with because you was thinking out loud, thinking because you... Krishan, nobody was going to get your ass. Cool. I thought of... Yo, this is so... Cool. I thought of everything because I'm sober now. Oh, my God. Jesus Christ. That's crazy. It's her sober. Please get that fixed, man. That shit's kind of crazy just being derailed and always fucking drunk like that. Um, you said boof and all this bullshit. Tear down. Then when she says she is done and doesn't care anymore, he says, I love you and I miss you. People saw the clear manipulation tactics. I wish I could just leave you alone, but I can't. I love you. Yo. Huh? No, just miss you for real. And I wanna and I wanna lick your pussy for real. One month later, Rock got intoxicated, broke into his house, and passed out in the bathtub. She took to Instagram Live and Krishan stated that part of the reason for her behavior is that she loves Blueface for, quote, taking her out the hood. A week after that, she stole his Mercedes-Benz G-Wagon and tried to drive it across the country. What? But before leaving the house, she left a message on the wall. I love Blue. Look closely. See what that's written in? I'll give you a hint. It's not ketchup. She actually got arrested for this situation, but it didn't lead to any major charges. Surely anyone at this point would realize these two should not be together. Instead, they decided to make their relationship official. In celebration, Krishan got a tattoo of Blue's name, Jonathan, right above her area. A couple months later, she got his whole face tattooed on her neck. They have both clearly showed that they have some sort of dependency on each other, but it is disproportionately affecting Krishan. So, how many blue face tattoos do you have? I got five. One on my face, one on my neck that say Johnny Jamal Porter. One on my p that say Jonathan. One on my hand that say Jonathan. Now she is a grown woman who is capable of making her own decisions, but Blueface is also proven to antagonize her. He is constantly putting a camera in her face. He knows how to push her buttons and does Please it for don't the shut entertainment up. Please don't shut Instagram up. Instagram following. Just a fighting. All your life you had to fight, huh? He loves Harpo, but you kill him dead before you let him beat you. Some people think he is trying to document her behavior for his own protection in case things get bad, because things were about to get really bad. A clip goes viral of Krishan beating up Blueface's sister. Allegedly, Blueface hit his own mother, left her bruised up, and his sister Callie showed up with her husband to. Had to kick my own blood out. Must have got I was crit. That shit was crazy, bro. That bar was crazy. He's hit his own mother, left her bruised up, and his sister Callie showed up with her husband to defend her mom. When Callie got there looking for a fight, apparently seven of Blue's friends jumped Callie and her husband. But the video clip that went viral cut all of that first part out. Yo, and they he's fucking slumped. They only showed a little scrap between Krishan and her. She got beat the fuck up. He got beat the fuck up for you. If you treat your mom bad, you'll treat anyone bad. Nothing about this situation is normal, but most people thought that if Blueface would be willing to fight his own family or let other people fight his family, then Krishan was not going to get special treatment. And they were right. Shortly after, Krishan and Blueface got into an altercation in public, which involved both of them throwing punches at each other. Krishan swung on Blueface first, and he was defending himself. This is the first time anyone had seen them physically assaulting each other, and it wouldn't be the last time. Just a few weeks later, another fight outside of a nightclub. We have reason to believe Blue started this one as he pulled her hair in the beginning of the clip, but Krishan is the one who ended up getting arrested. But are you not gonna get into any sort of like physical blues again? Hey. All right, yeah, you're all right. right in here first, bro. Yeah, hey, man. At this point, it seems like Blueface's music career is officially done. Sometimes- Bro, it's also like she's always in, in like these interviews, she's always on the verge of like crying over something and it's like, random like they'll be they'll be talking they'll be talking and suddenly like blueface will say like one wrong thing or make one wrong joke that she doesn't like and then she's like about to cry and I'm like why why would you say that and da 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 it's like it's this shit, this shit is just crazy bro so we assume that because someone has a successful music career that's what they want to do for the rest of their lives the ironic thing is people are starting to realize that krishan is the one maintaining blueface's relevance she looks so the different. narrative is starting to shift 
people stop looking at Krishan as the crazy girlfriend and start looking at Blueface as the manipulator. Who? Wait, this must have been before the, the cast stream, huh? A month ago. Yeah. <laughs> this must have been before the cast stream, bro. Cause shit look shit, nah. We seen we seen. I think that's the first time we actually get got to see them sit down and just like what they do in in like a an hour, two hours length. And uh, you know? Yeah, you know, you know. They're rooting for her. At the same time, people start looking at Blue's mom, Clarissa, as an instigator as well, I'm because Clarissa. she's constantly going on Instagram Live, bringing up drama, and trying to get her own clout from her son's drama. Really? Blueface is a grown man, and it's obvious that she wants to insert herself into his relationship for her own benefit. Messy. But I want to get on here and ask Mr. Blueface, where's your family? Where are the people you started with? Where's Bravo? Where's Earl? Where, where are the people that were on your team when you started? And if y'all can follow me on my Instagram, I will be live again tomorrow, same time, asking the same questions. And anybody that's in my comments saying, why don't you call him? He's your son. You're blocked. It's like, yo, what? What is wrong with you? So how does this end? With a reality TV show, of course, Crazy in Love was just announced, along with Krishan getting another neck tattoo of Blueface. It's really hard to tell how much of this is real, and how much of this is all for shock that's value what I, That's what I was thinking, because when I seen him punch the dad, I was like, okay, it's a reality show. So some of this shit gotta be scripted. We Earl, all Earl's his uncle. Goddamn! Earl's the I'm uncle name. I'm leaving a nigga named Earl in the hood too. Yo, what? I'll agree this is not healthy or normal, but they have an incentive. I ain't gonna lie, that was kind of crazy, bro. Like, whenever can you, like, walk, like, whenever can you try to put your mans on, walk up to a girl and be like, yeah, my nigga Earl trying to talk. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Say it again, I promise. I'm sorry. It's just, <laughs> Earl, I just, I thought you were joking. Yo, shout out to anybody named Earl, but hey, it is fucked up to, 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 to name somebody Earl, bro. That's fucked up. Shout out to Earl, uh, shout out to Earl's sweatshirt shirt, though. But his name's not even, his name's not even Earl, though. <laughs> Which is even crazier. You can have any, you can have any rap name you want and you choose Earl? Like, what? <laughs> to keep up this toxic lifestyle because they are making money from it. I want to feel bad for them. I want to think that Blueface is going to focus on music one day again. But I think this is exactly where they all want to be. Uh, Earl is your middle name? Exactly, bro. You know why you know why middle name you know why it's a middle name? It's cause it's hidden, bro. On all documents, it's always first and last name. God forbid you gotta put your, your middle name, bro. Job application out the fucking window. I know this nigga name. I know this nigga name Earl. Ugh. How many good Earls you know, man? Every Earl you know just is like a drunk old man that beats women. I'm so sorry to put that on you, but it's your middle name. You're good, bro. Uh, you're you're good, man. Earl. Earl. Earl sweatshirt. Earl, bro. His real name isn't Earl. Earl though, like, it's just a. I don't know what that. I don't know. I still don't even know where that shit came from. But ain't his real name like Tebe or something? Tebe uh something. I forgot his last name. <laughs> 